Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach. Welcome to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your mentor coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's A Shuffle. And we have a special guest. She's amazing. She's wonderful. She's getting everything going. Her conscience is high because I feel it through the microphone. We talked before we got started. Emily Burrs, welcome to Life's A Shuffle. So for our audiences out there, you know, with our podcast, we want to be straightforward and get to know people. So kind of tell us who you are and what makes you who you are today. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me on your show. Um, It's truly such an honor. And this is my first podcast experience. So I'm extra excited this morning. Um, But yeah, my name is Emily and I am born and raised Bay Area girl. I I did grow up kind of all over California, though. It's pretty cool. Um, I started in the Bay. My dad moved us around a lot. So I lived in San Diego and uh, Orange County, Los Angeles. I went to school in Arizona. My brother is in Seattle, Washington, and I have family on the East Coast. So I really feel like I've experienced um, a lot of different areas, and I... Yeah, you know, I went through life. I've always, since I was a little girl, I've kind of questioned life around me. And I don't mean that in a morbid way at all. I just, I get really excited by meeting other people, experiencing new things. And I just love learning why things are the way they are. Um, I've always been artistic. I've always loved arts and crafts. And I honestly think I had my first camera in hand Um maybe age like eight. I don't know. I don't know. I know it was a Barbie camera (laughs) and it was bright pink. And uh, yeah, you know, I went through school. I wasn't the best student, um, but I ended up going to University of Arizona and studying uh, all things science. So my goal was to become a pharmacist. I was a minor in chemistry. And let me tell you guys, I loved those science classes. I loved being challenged, but I had a lot of anxiety and um, it was not easy for me. I had to study my ass off and it kind of always felt like it was never enough. And my dad, he was a biochemist. So I think I was heavily influenced by him and I knew I wanted to help people and I've always been very giving and generous and big heart. And I just, I wanted to help people. My mom, on the other hand, was like this hippie and uh, much more free spirited. And she was always just like, you know, trust your gut, follow your dreams, follow your heart. And I was like, okay, like, I think I want to get into music. I think I want to be a DJ. And they were like, no, you know, like, that's a hobby. That's a hobby. That's what you do for fun. I'm like, oh, okay, okay. And then I'm like, science, 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 become a pharmacist. And I actually worked in a pharmacy for two summers. And I really enjoyed it, but, you know, I was just kind of squirmish around blood and, you know, needles and all of that. So after college, um, and I started to go to therapy in college because I was just so anxiety ridden. I graduated, everyone was posting these jobs they got and where they were moving. And I was just so lost. So my, and hopefully this is okay. Like I, you know, I'm here to share my story. I'm just like getting right into it. I feel like. Yes, uh, share your story, please. I want to hear it. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I can talk all day, but I'll I'll keep this concise. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, you know, I I was feeling lost, and my mom was like, you know what, um, you have always loved the ocean. You've been in the desert the past four years. Like, just a suggestion. Why don't you move to the beach, the ocean? And my best friend was moving to Santa Monica, so it was kind of like, well, I guess I could go live with her. And I was like, but what am I going to do? Like, I know I need to apply to pharmacy school. That's the next step. But I just, I don't know. And my mom's like, well, Em, you know, it sounds like you need to learn how to breathe. So maybe you should go to a yoga class. And she's like, quite frankly, I think you should apply to Lululemon because every time I go in there, the girls are just like you. And I was like, mom, to pay a hundred plus dollars for stretchy pants is insane. Like, I'm, I don't believe in that. That's crazy. And she's like, no, trust me, you need to go, you know, you'll get a discount, just go. So I showed up straight out of college in a business casual outfit, literally a skirt and like a blazer and my resume. And the manager sat me down and 
I was like, yeah, you know, I'm looking for a job. And she started to interview me. And, and at, by the end, she said, so you got the job. I really want you on my team. And she's like, but you need to go inside and buy some yoga pants. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my gosh. And to this day, you know, it was kind of a joke that I showed up in a business casual outfit with my resume to Lululemon because they're so, you know, kind of casual and laid back. So in Santa Monica, working for Lululemon, I just, they had such a great company culture. I learned so much about my core values, my goals, my dreams in life. And I was constantly being put in charge of social media and, um, you know, photo ops and this creative side of me that I just didn't even realize I had. And I was working for the children's line of Lululemon and we had our own social media account. I was running it. I was doing really well, thriving. I was getting a lot of acknowledgement for it. And so my mom, once again, intuitive lady, just saw something in me that I didn't see. And for Christmas, she bought me um, a professional Canon camera. And that really stepped my game up. And then next thing you know, these moms in LA were asking me to take headshots and family photos. And it really just spiraled from there. So that's truly how I became a photographer. Um, I I was feeling really depressed in LA. I knew I ne needed to make a change. So I kind of just quit my life down there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to move home. I'm going to learn how to be a yoga teacher. And I'm going to be a photographer. And long story short, that's exactly what I did. Like I moved home, everything fell in alignment for me. I kind of went on this spiritual journey with yoga and a life coach. And, um, you know, this year I turned 30, I'm in my third year of my business and I'm a full-time photographer and I can't even believe it. You guys, <laughs> it, it's awesome. It's like, uh society our parents want us to be a certain mold right yeah. this is the way to go this is the path because i know go back and being a kid we're, we're now in our i'm in my late 30s yeah first thing my dad was saying in the 90s son what you need to do you just have a government job because yeah. idea for them was you get a job you stay for 40 years and you retire a pension that's it you play golf you know it's funny that when they think when we think about what our parents want it, it always comes up of resistance things are just not working out yeah. So when you start working for Lululemon, you start doing this camera and everything just seemed to flow like the ocean. It just wasn't no resistance to it, right? Exactly. And that is the key. Like when there is anxiety and depression, um, you know, or any sort of resistance, like it's it's an opportunity for you to take a step back and say, what is not working for me? Like, why am I feeling this way? Why is there resistance? And oftentimes it's because you're not in alignment with your core values. And it took me a long time to realize that. And now moving forward, I always um, kind of check myself and I'm like, does this feel good? Yes or no. And if not, where am I out of alignment? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Emily, congratulations to this accomplishment. And second, belated happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> That's a big 3-0. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> and you know what? You're you're still young and there's still a lot more that I know you will accomplish in life. And I love hearing your journey because, and this is why I was telling Ron, I wanted to bring you in because at your age, you know, it's still not so many people at that age actually would already have that kind of awareness and would already have that type of, you know, let, let me take a step back. Let me check in my with myself. Is this what I want? Am I happy here or not? But you you didn't stop. You kept going until you figured out what really was for you and what really makes you happy. And really, what really felt for you was or is for you and is you. Yeah, thank you, Gloria. Um, I I know I was thinking about how you and I have previously talked about this, and I really believe in my heart that there should be a course starting in high school, maybe even middle school, definitely college, a, almost like a, a course created by life coaches that teach you how to tap into your core values and teach you how to create a life vision for yourself and goals and how to go after them. Just this like mindset, because I really do think, and just like you said, Ron, too, 
we're influenced by our parents, by society, and by even guidance counselors oftentimes, at least that was my experience growing up. Mm -hmm. They see these traits in you and they're like, oh, you know, you'd be a great pharmacist. You um, care about others. You have a scientific background. Like this makes sense. And and then there's always that security piece, like you said, Ron, you know, working towards a 401k and having health <laughs> insurance and working towards retirement. And then you, you die. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, like, yeah. Of course, some days to this day, I'm like, oh man, if only I could just have that stable nine to five, you know, like consistency and security and not have to worry about my health insurance. But then those days where I'm out and I hit a milestone or I meet a new client and I'm just lit up, I'm like, you know what? I'll worry about health insurance <laughs> later. You know, like, you know what I mean? I just, yeah. I really think there's an opportunity to teach us younger how to figure out what we want in life without being so heavily influenced by others. Yeah, I agree with you and, you know, 100% on that because a lot of the women or even men, men and women in their 20s, they don't have that type of mindset yet. It's still trying to figure out who they are and where they want to be in life. You know, do they still want to continue college or do they want to even go to college or where do they want to work? You know, right. make a certain amount of money. What is it that they really want? And a lot of the times, a lot of people don't really realize and find that within them until, you know, late 30s, 40s, 50s. I'm not saying like you're never too old for right. any of that, but what I like and what I from from what I heard from you is that at that age, it's just I think it's great and it's wonderful that you had that. And it also seems that you know your mom was very supportive of you in this. Um, and again, not many parents are. My mom was I was very stubborn. My mom wanted me to be a nurse for the longest time when I was in high school. She kept pushing that you, you should be a nurse. You should be a nurse. And going to college is like she was looking at this, med you know, other medical schools and she's looking for nursing college for me. But I was looking at something yeah. else. And right. um, yeah, so that's that's great. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that I feel like we all want that deep down. We want our parents approval. We want our friends approval, all of that. And I think, you know, um, to be fair, I think my dad was always kind of nervous with my decisions. <laughs> However, <laughs> what I've learned is he trusts me at the end of the day. So though it may not be the route he would have taken, he I've I've heard, I've heard from, you know, word on the street is that he's just really proud of the decisions I make and he always trusts that they're the right ones for me. So it is pretty cool at the end of the day to have, you know, really supportive parents. Yes. And let me um, get this. So just for our listeners out there, Emily, I found she is um, she's done my photo shoot and she's the one who took a lot of the pictures that I've been posting on my social media, who made me feel very comfortable in front of the camera. And uh, for the longest time, I did not have any of that confidence that like I was, you know, we were having conversation before we started the podcast that I am one of those people who get very stiff and tense in front of the camera. If you tell me to pose a certain way, I feel like I don't know how to pose. Mm -hmm. I just know how to smile in front of the camera mm -hmm. and everything else. I don't until I met you and, um, you know, we did our first, uh, the first time with you, I was a bit nervous because I was thinking, oh, she's going to tell me to do all these poses and I can't do them. So I, I had all those doubts. I wasn't doubting you. I was doubting myself, you know, and I knew that I had to do this and I wanted to do this, but I need to get myself out of that situation or out of that thought in order for me to make this happen for me. And I think, you know, after just after a while of just talking to you and having a conversation and I just felt, you know, more comfortable. And then the second time I met you again, it was just, it was great. I, I think it just kind of happened naturally and I, it just kind of flowed smoothly. And we discovered that we both like the ocean because we're both yeah. Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, so that's um, who Emily is. 
And she's a wonderful photographer who makes a lot of the women out there very comfortable. So I got a question. Um, so as a photographer, you're more geared on the women. Yeah. Why, um, why the women? Oh my gosh. So I get this question a lot and, you know, I have kind of a funny answer to it. I mean, it's not funny, but you know, maybe it's funny. Okay. So (laughs) when I first started my client, so to speak, was (laughs) these young girls because I was working for the little girls line of Lululemon. So I would take these, you know, 12 year old girls out around the block. I love working with young girls. Um, and I would take them around the neighborhood and I would shoot them in our latest clothing. And it was so fun for them. And it was, I could just see their confidence go through the roof and they felt so special and so beautiful. And like, that's what we all want. Right. And Mm -hmm. they, they just express it outwardly. Like they are just buzzing by the end of the shoot and just walking around like, mom, you should have seen me. And like, it's so, so cute. So when that company or that brand went under and we had to kind of close our doors, we, I was like, well, I still want to shoot. I like shooting. And I actually was living in LA and I was single and um, I had a tribe of friends, but I had a lot of guy friends. So I actually shot mostly guys when I was living in LA, which I think is, I, that's the part that I think is really funny um, because I really, <laughs> I used to joke that I was going to make this like a uh, calendar of men of LA because <laughs> I was like shooting these men all the time. I was like, I'm going to make a calendar and all my single girlfriends are going to buy it. <laughs> Um, but then I started, you know, of course shooting families. And I think a lot of photographers go through this where they shoot just everything, everything from landscape to families, to weddings, to events, you just shoot everything because people are like, Oh, she knows how to use a camera. I'm going to ask her to shoot. And then you are like, Oh, that was not fun. Oh, that didn't go so well. Oh, that went really well. And, you know, you slowly figure out kind of what, what your um, niche is or what lights you up. So Like I said, I moved home from LA to the Bay Area about three years ago. I was going through yoga teacher training and I started my journey in San Francisco by reaching out to two Lululemon ambassadors. And I was like, hey, I'm new here. I'm a new photographer. I would love to offer you a shoot. Like, let's go out and explore the city together. And one was a man, one was a woman, but they're both fitness instructors. One was a yoga teacher, one was a fitness instructor. And from there, they just, they had big platforms on social media and they just spread my name around and it it truly just spread. And then being in yoga teacher training, um, everyone wanted photos post training to start their website and their social media. So I, I learned right away that I absolutely love yoga photography. And the thing about yoga photography, when you go through yoga teacher training, they actually kind of share with you, you know, they teach you a lot about ego and the practice. And it's not like, how do I want to say this? They kind of teach you that it's not about the pose. So to go onto a beach in a bikini and take a photo of you doing headstand, like you're still operating from a place of ego when you do that, you know? Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is really interesting because I love shooting my yogis, but I, I need to capture more than the pose. I need to capture the feeling, the light, the practice rather than a pretty pose photo, you know? And slowly over time, I think through my own spiritual journey and working with a life coach and and going through this just like, I don't know, I don't know how else to say it this growth period as a woman stepping into my power as a woman, I think my law of attraction has been really strong and that is what I've been attracting in. So as I go through my own journey and my own stepping into my power, owning my womanhood, I'm attracting in women who are going through the same thing. So that's kind of my long-winded answer as to why I'm working with women. And also, of course, you know, I just think there are a lot of badass women in the Bay Area. Um, and it's mm-hmm. just fun to, like, meet each other and collaborate and and do this together. 
Hell yeah, there is a lot out yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I was, I actually, I just had this, Um, I was telling one of my friends, one of my girlfriends, we were talking about something and, you know, we were just like, you know what, I'm feeling like a badass today. Yeah. And I said, why, why don't we just feel like a badass every day? Just walk yeah. out there and, you know, and it's funny. And I was driving and I was listening to some old school music and I just started jamming in the car and I was singing to myself. I recorded myself and I sent it to them. I said, yeah, I'm feeling like a badass today with this song. <laughs> it was, right? it, it just, it's, it feels great. And I understand and I see, um, you know, what you're saying. Um, and even with the yoga, like the poses, it's not just about that. There's more to that. So I, I'm not an instructor, but I do, um, I love Bikram yoga is um what I do because um it's just done so much for me as far as all my injuries um and especially actually um so I, I have a torn ACL and a torn meniscus and I've been walking around and still playing volleyball with it wow. but I think one of the biggest thing that helped me a lot is not just therapy is Bikram yoga mm -hmm. um but being in that room and, and, you know, just trying to just doing the poses, I, I think I feel like when I'm in there, I wasn't just trying to do the poses. I wasn't just trying to figure out how should I do this or can I do this or challenge myself. I feel like I'm in a different world when I'm in that yeah. room. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah, I love hearing that so much because it just resonates with me. And um, I think when I was a yoga teacher, that was really, well, I'm still a yoga teacher. I'm just not teaching right now. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was teaching regularly, that was my big message was that it's not about the pose. And a lot of it is the mindset and getting to that place where you can really quiet the noise and get in touch with yourself and just give yourself the space to like breathe and think and reconnect with who you are. Um, so yeah, I love to hear that. And, you know, just touching on that injury aspect, I, this is maybe an unpopular opinion, but I believe so much of injury and aches and pains is a mindset. Um, and I really do believe that you can heal yourself by switching your mindset. And, and it's a tough, tough thing to practice. But um, I think a lot of it is mindset, uh, of course, with physical healing too. But I, it makes sense to me when you say that, you know, um, you were able to get through your injury in with yoga. Oh my gosh. Yes. And this is, it's, you can't even, I can't even explain. I've gotten so much criticism, you know, with, you need to get surgery. You need to get that yeah. fixed. So by the way, I never got surgery for it and it's been going about two years, uh, close to three years now that I've been walking around with it. And wow. to these days when people hear about it, it's like, oh, you need to get that fixed. You need, I said, no, I don't. I'm fine. All I wanted to do is as long as if I can get back to my daily activities and still play at least once a week or twice a week. Yeah. And it's not like I'm trying to be a professional volleyball player. I just want to play still, you know, yeah. and still work out. I'm fine. And what got me through that is one year of physical therapy and Bikram yoga. And yeah. I, you know, go back to the same place and um, the lady who owns it, she knows it. And she had helped me so much with a lot of my, my injuries, just trying to get back. And, you know, again, it's, it is, yeah, I, I've gotten a lot of criticism on that, but you know, everyone has different beliefs. Um, I had my own, so I stuck with it and I, I just did my own thing. Um, and even not just with that, it, you know, sometimes, when I go through certain uh, situation in my life, you know, when I'm feeling down or I just start to feel something, I turn to yoga. It, it's mm -hmm. like a, a meditation for me as well as I'm there and I'm sweating because hour and a half of that class, as soon as I walk out of that room, I feel like a different person. I feel refreshed. And, you know, I love hearing that because... I have realized over time, really in this past year, how much of my background and my yoga teaching experience to the photo shoot. So, you know, as you mentioned that coming to the photo shoot, you know, you're nervous at first and by the end, you know, you're feeling comfortable and confident and excited. Like 
I really believe the way that I showed up in the yoga room is the same way that I show up to each uh, photo shoot. So it's it's pretty cool to have my two worlds collide in that way. That's amazing. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I got. I'm curious about this. this. So yeah. I hear a lot of things: of spirituality, yoga, um, follow your path, energy vibration. What point in your life kind of transcend that? Like, what made you want to kind of find something better? I guess or alternative. Yeah, I really, really appreciate that question because I think it's so much of my story. Um, so, like I mentioned, I had been living in LA and. In that time, I realized, like, I don't really want to become a pharmacist. That's not really aligned with my core values, but I thought that's what I should do. I knew that was the secure and stable job. And I always had this internal conflict with the fact that I worked retail. And though my parents were like, Emily, you're doing great. You know, like, don't beat yourself up. You know, you're doing so well. I just, there was like, I wanted more, you know, like I loved that job. I loved who I worked with. I loved what I did, but I wanted more. And I always, like I said, I always wanted to help people. And I didn't really feel like I was doing that by working my job. So that's where kind of the yoga teacher idea came to place. Like I was like, oh, I feel really good in yoga. Like maybe I could help others feel really good. And then I just kept living in LA and I slowly over time just started feeling more and more depressed. Um, and I couldn't even really tell you why. Like, I was like, I have this great life. I have a job. I have friends. Um, but I just kind of felt sad. And it came to a head when I was 27 and that job fell apart. So that the little girl's line uh, fell apart. And I was like, just so depressed by the fact that I was losing my job. But I really now looking back on it, I feel like it was the universe being like, you're not even happy. Like, let me just give you a push. And I, it's really funny because I won tickets to this adult summer camp, basically. It was called uh, Camp Yoga. And I went and it was in Ojai, California. And I, you know, I rode a horse for the first time. I learned how to surf for the first time. I did, uh, uh, what are they called? You know, the high ropes course where it's like really high off the ground. And I was terrified. And it's so funny how just touching base with all those kind of inner childhood, you know, dreams and things that I had never, I had never even gone to summer camp as a kid. So touching base with that side of me. And then I was in an hour long meditation at this camp and I was just sobbing in the meditation. And I, I kept having this visual of my dad and my dad was hugging me. And when I got done at the meditation, I was like, okay, this is crystal clear. I need to move home and I need to leave LA and I need to start again and I need to get back to my roots. So I would really say at 27, I had this come to Jesus moment that I needed to make a major and drastic change. So I left behind my tribe, my friends this place I had called home for the past, you know, five to six years. I left my job, everything. And I, I moved home at 27 in with my parents. Like it was this whole joke, like we're roommates again. <laughs> um, two days later, and they were, they were honestly pumped, you guys. Like this isn't like a sad story. Like everyone was like, they were so pumped to have me move back. They were pumped to have me live in the house again. And they were just so incredibly supportive of this decision. And then two days later after moving home, I met my now fiance. And that was kind of my first sign from the universe. Like, this is where you need to be. And then I started yoga teacher training. And I just tapped into the spiritual side. And I realized how my sensitivity is actually not my weakness. It's actually my superpower. And as I continued to explore my sensitivity and my emotions and my feelings, it was like everything just got in alignment for me. And it was just like, I don't know how to explain it other than using the word magic. Like everything felt so good. Everything was exciting again. And um, there was just this sense of calm and peace. So 
to this day, I still explore my spirituality. I meditate. I do yoga. I talk to my angels. I pull cards. Like I do all the things. Um, so yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but I'd say about age 27 and I'd say I'm still on the journey. You know what? All of us, uh, we did a podcast away Carmen last week and she put it into better perspective. Um, all of us, doesn't matter if you're 20, 27, 50, 60, 80, you're still alive. You have these aha moments or wake up yeah. moments and listen to your story. I had mine about um, almost, what was it 2000, almost over two years ago. I got sick and tired of the life I was living. I was unhappy. I remember bawling my eyes out one night because my relationships with people, with women sucked. My relationships yeah. with people sucked. I was unhappy. And I said, what, what do I need to do? And all of a sudden, really just overnight, I downloaded Audible from Amazon. I found John Maxwell, 15 Invaluable Laws to Growth. And that started my journey. Love From it. there, I found IPEC and Gloria went through coaching and all that stuff together. But we have these awakening moments. It's like a matrix. You, you take the blue pill or the red pill. Yeah. These moments are meant to strengthen us and awaken us. But if we don't bring awareness to these actions or plans, we can't go to the next level. I mean, I read in one book, um, it says when we pray or expect things, so, so when we expect something great to happen, it should be wrapped perfectly in, in a nice bow and a box and you can wrap it with a big smile. But really nine times out of 10 or 10 out of 10 times, it's not wrapped that way, but it is presenting itself. And it's up to you to say, look, do I take the red pill or the blue pill with this great opportunity in front of me? Um, and when you said... And so for me, just a quick back background, I was, I've been personal training now for like five years and doing it for, for full time for almost four years, did, I mean, I don't do it anymore. And it, it started to become more of a, a psychological battle. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I got to get more clients. I got to work hard. I got to work 70 hours a week. I got to work seven days a week. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. I, I got to do nothing. Yeah. But send my power. And that's when I made a pivotal choice recently. I always ask myself, if not now, when? And what do you really want? It's like a self-checking for myself. I want this. Don't even focus on that. And when you do that, podcasts like Ray Carmen, and especially yours right now, influence myself and vibrate higher because, man, thank you for another feather in my cap or another nickel in my change, you're because I'm on the right path. Mm -hmm. So I'm trusting the process. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, Ron, like, the thing is, is that, you know, I don't know how to explain it. It's like easier to go through the suffering and just keep going on the path that you're on. And it is so much harder and takes so much more courage to be like, I have to make a change. I have to quit X, Y, and Z. I need, you know, that's so much harder. And so I think it's the scarier option and and the braver option to you know make those pivotal changes so it's really cool to hear your story as well yeah, yeah it's really it um i really think um god i think the people around me um because without these great opportunities in front of myself i wouldn't be who i am today um i was that kid at one point that was molested I was a kid that came from a broken household, meaning that I had a stepmom that abused me. Mm. Um, I, I used to gravitate. I was afraid of being alone. Me being alone in the sense that I was afraid not to be with somebody. I was afraid of abandonment. I was afraid of losing people. I was always trying to find money, more money, you know, because I want to have these. You know, I got in debt not because I took business risks, but because I was always constantly buying clothes or shoes or whatever it took to press the opposite sex because I thought that would bring more happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, I hated this girl one time called a narcissist. Not probably good language, but it is what it is. <laughs> I brought her $900 Louboutin shoes because, and $300, sorry, $900 Christian Louboutin shoes. I took her to Vegas at the same time and I also sent a hundred red roses that cost $300 mm -hmm. and the whole idea was the more bigger gifts I give the more she would love me when that's totally false mm -hmm. I didn't love myself enough and 
my whole life has been led with fear, 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 fear. And it's really great now to step outside those comfort zones, realize, wait a minute, that was really just holding me back. But the beautiful part is those are all just invisible walls. The second part that sums everything up, I'm so overly thankful, grateful, and happy I had all those experiences because it made me who I am today. Exactly. I love that so much. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm like just taking it all in. I'm like, I feel like I'm just getting so excited listening or so inspired listening to you talk. It's so true. It it is so true because, um, you know, I guess my hardest thing is always, you know, my mother and I, my mom still alive. My dad passed away five years ago. And, um, but for me, when he passed away, his death was a gift. And because I looked at him, not, not out, out of um, sorrow or upset or whatever, I just said I wanted to be me. And what I meant by that was my dad had all these ambitions, these, these goals, these dreams. You know, old school way is when I get old enough, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And that never happens, okay? So I said, I don't, I'm going to do what I want to in my life. And I look at my mom, my mom turned 72 months ago, and just is just my perspective, and obviously I have to accept where she is in her life, but my mom is still alive. My mom can do all these wonderful things. Oh, no, I can't my age, or I can't because of COVID, or I can't, I can't, I can't. And and now I'm getting to the point now, I'm, you know what, I just have to accept it is what it is. Yeah. I, I, I can't see past what they can't see. I, I see something else. They don't see what I see. So, and, and what kind of shocked me just two months ago, and I think I said this before in the podcast, was I, at all these, so I grew up Jehovah's Witness. Mm. After all these years, I didn't know there's a difference between religion and spirituality. Mm. And I woke up like, wait a minute here. There is a difference between spirituality and religion that Buddha was before Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. How come we didn't know all this stuff? Like, yeah. how come religion says this is the way? And if you don't follow this way, you're crap. You're going to go to heaven or hell or whatever they say. Why are we let that false belief? That's just my opinion about that. And that's just how I feel at this point. But it's really marvelous to hear someone like you and, and, and Gloria and all these people that we've interviewed on podcasts that resonate high with that. Because it's like, wait a minute, we have all these great abundance around us. We just have to have a choice to pick it up. Totally. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, I was thinking um, while I was listening to you, Ron, is that and and when when Emily was kind of sharing her story earlier, too, was when you guys were talking about the wake up call. You know, I think for me, I call that like you're calling. Right. It's it's the same thing. It's just you're calling that that's what it is. And then but in between all that and before that there's those fears and like what you mentioned um Emily earlier was that the the fear of you, you know like something holding you back to really just go for it because what's holding you back is do I have to should I should I not mm-hmm. so there's always all those fears behind it and I know that you know with you how did you overcome that or what did you do to overcome all the fears that you had Oh gosh. Yeah. That's a big, uh, a big theme for me. Definitely. Um, you know, Ron, you said it, you said I've been living in fear and growing up. And I think what I'm learning is that is really common. And I definitely think that I growing up was programmed more to come from a place of fear rather than a place of love. So rather than like being excited for my future and excited for the unknown and excited for all these things is like, I'm like fearful. I'm like, well, what if this happens? What if that? What if I fail? What if this? So, and the money of course is a big one, especially if you're, you know, quitting one career and going to the next, you're Mm -hmm. like, what if I, (laughs) (laughs) what if I drown? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, I think moving from LA to home, so okay, I moved in with my parents that eliminated some of the fear around, you know, just like being on my own. And while I'm going through this transition. And then I, I went through the yoga teacher training, which um, it's not like every single human is going to go through that type of training. But I do think it really helps to work with 
you know, either go through some sort of training, like invest in yourself or work with a life coach, work with a therapist. Um, I think a lot of fear just lives in our heads. And when you're on your own and you're trying to transition on your own and maybe you're trying to build a business on your own, a lot of doubt and fear and all of that lives inside your head. So when you can find a community, find a mentor, find a life coach um, that can help get that out of your head, I think that really helps. And that's what really helped me. Um, in all honesty, I right when I moved home, I found a life coach and I still work with her today. And that has helped me tremendously work through fear. Um, but I'm also a self-help junkie. So like I love reading books. I love podcasts. I love Brene Brown is like literally my, I don't even know, queen. Like I just love her so much. Um, so, you know, and that's not for everyone, but I do think it's, it's good to find a community or someone that can, um, help you when you're feeling down. That's true. So since, since you've done this work and you kind of have this fear, so I'm asked well, one question. I asked my second question. Do you think Emily was born with fear? Oh gosh. Um, I don't, I don't think that we're born with fear. However, I think depending on your surroundings, I think you, uh, you absorb it over time. Like this is kind of a crazy little mini story, but my mom shares the story of how when I was in her belly, she experienced the great earthquake in the Bay Area. And I have an older brother. And oh, she was, 1989, big earthquake. Yes. Yep. And she was home alone with my brother. And my dad was on a business trip. And the power went out. And she tells the story that she was absolutely terrified. And I was in her belly. To this day, you guys, I am petrified of earthquakes. Like I, it doesn't matter how small it is, how big it is. I'm a California girl. I cry hysterically every time. I hate them so much. And I, I share that story because I believe that to some degree, I think I really took on her energy being in her belly and she was so terrified that day because, you know, other people are born and raised California and they're like, oh yeah, it's fun. It's a ride, whatever. You know, like they don't, they're not scared. And I have no other reason other than the fact that my mom was like petrified. And so I'm just like, I think that's a really good example of how I think based on your surroundings and your parents and what's going on in life, I think it's very easy to absorb it. And then you just repeat the patterns and then you grow up one day and you're like, oh my God, I'm so scared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's I think like you a, can unlearn it, you know? Mm-hmm. I, I, you it's like um, the best way to describe it is like software being uploaded. Yeah. Like you don't, you're not aware of something up until someone brings it or, you know, a, a phone doesn't know the home button until you press it, but someone has to tell the, the phone to press this button where the home button is. Yeah. Because it, it, hearing your story, I don't know too much about my mother's fears but I, I grew up my dad and I witnessed his not fear so fear does two things it, it stifle you or propel you forward one of the two you get yeah. stuck you go forward my dad's fear propelled him forward I wonder was that became who I was so idea back my dad's idea and became my idea years ago was the only way to make it you gotta work hard and that's it that's the only way to make success in life. Mm-hmm. So that was my belief system for a lot of years. I'm telling, wait a minute, I don't have to work hard to be successful. You can be successful in many facets of life. Yeah. So as you yourself have this fear inside you, when did you realize it was controlling you and you were not controlling it? Mm. It's controlled in you and you were not controlling it. Um. Yeah, I would say when I went through the yoga teacher training, I think I just love the philosophy that you learn in yoga. And I think between that and then working with the life coach, you know, I would say this fear or that fear, or, you know, I'd say, you know, I really want this. And then my life coach would say, well, why, why don't you go for it? 
And then that's when the fears show up. And when I'd start to talk all the fears out loud and I'm bouncing it off this woman, I'm like, oh, that actually sounds a lot like my mom or, oh, that actually sounds a lot like my dad. And, oh, that actually isn't my fear now that we're talking about it. You know, like you can kind of recognize like, oh, well, I have this side of me that's like such a go-getter, but I'm, I'm, I'm suppressing her. Like, why am I suppressing her? And yeah, I think when you can just kind of recognize your fears, you can have an acceptance and then you can actually move forward and work through it. But it's like when you just give in to the fears and let them run your life, like, I don't know, it's almost like you're blind, I guess. But um, yeah, it's funny. I, one exercise that I do sometimes is like I'll name my fears or I'll, I'll visualize them. I'm very visual. So I'll like picture them at like a party <laughs> and I'm like, oh, like I don't really want to talk to her today, you know, and it's silly, but it, it helps it's me cool. get through it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what? It's no right or wrong. It's just what helps you to cope, right? Right. Mm hmm. And I, I think we talked about this. Um, we touched on this on our previous podca podcast too with Ray was sometimes you just have to think of the worst. Yeah. And if that worst could be your fear. So it could be you're getting ready for, let's say, a competition. And, you know, it could be because this is what I used to do before. Before I um, compete, I always tell myself, oh, gosh, she's going to beat me. She's going to kick me in the head. She's going to do this to me. And then well, I did martial. I used to compete for um, I did martial arts before and I used to compete a lot. And I remember I would, you know, when I see anybody else before I actually fight is I would look at my opponents and that fear, you know, it just starts coming to me where, oh my gosh, she's so good. She's going to kick my ass. She's going to beat me up. You know, I start feeling that and I start yeah. get, getting nervous. But the moment I actually walk in there and I start doing what I need to do, it's a totally opposite and different, but it's kind of like what you, you do is you use that and you kind of challenge yourself at the same time. And I think that's what kind of, and that's, I think also is what makes you stronger. Yeah. And, you know, like kind of continuing on with that thought, Gloria, like for me, for example, like I'm just going to throw out an example. I used to get really nervous and some, it's a lot less now, but let's say like I had a shoot, it was a really big deal or something. I'm so nervous for it and I'm doubting myself and the fears are coming in. Like, why did they even hire me? There's better photographers out there, you know? Let's say all of that happens before. And then I go have this shoot. We get into the groove. It's amazing. And I come out of it the other side. Like, that was so silly. That was an amazing experience. You know, this is what I learned, blah, blah, blah. And I think you can take that experience with you moving forward. So when you feel the same experiences, either going into another photo shoot or another experience in life, you're like, okay, this is what I do. I get really nervous ahead of time. I bully myself and, and I come out at the other side happy. So like, I'm just going to remind myself that I'm going to come out the other side. So like, you know, I don't know. It's almost like just recognizing that this is your pattern that you do before big events or big um, opportunities and you, you've been through it, you know, the outcome. So like maybe just focus on the outcome, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So is this what you do? So before you go behind the camera and before you shoot, you do, um, let's say you shoot, um, and you can have back to back clients. Yeah. Um, so is this something that you do and you tell yourself before? I mean, I know you'd have to adapt to different personalities as well. Yeah. Um, so do you still get that feeling? Yeah. So it's been a learning process for me in terms of my scheduling and who I work with. Um, like I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of photographers go through this phase where they just say yes to everything, but you you know what lights you up and you know what type of photography you like to do. So it's definitely taken me time to figure out my ideal client and like who I really want to work with. Um, and once I figured that out, that eliminated a lot of nerves for me because I was just so excited. Like I love, love, love working with women in the health and wellness world. I love working with um, healers and fitness professionals and yogis. So now for the most part, I'm just excited. But in terms of like, let's say I have multiple clients in one day, you know, 
that's like such a different mindset than maybe like a really big brand shoot or something like that. So I know Mm -hmm. to be strategic with my scheduling, but yeah, you know, sometimes when I'm meeting new people for the first time, of course I feel nerves, you know, it's that people pleaser. Like I want to deliver a good experience. I want us to vibe. I want them to like me. Um, And so I tend to meditate. I tend to move my body before the shoot. And a lot of times before my shoots, I'll listen to inspiring podcasts. Mm. So I just try to really get into like a good, happy mindset. And if for any reason I'm feeling off or anything like that, um, a lot of times I'll actually communicate that to my client or I'll check in with my clients and say, how are you doing? It's just, I don't know. I feel like intuition does plays a part and a lot of it is mindset. Yeah. That's certainly true. A lot of everything is really just mindset. Because mm-hmm. how you had all these fears and doubts going in, as soon as you get through it, like, wait a minute, where did all that come from? Why was I felt that way? It was an amazing photo shoot, you know? Yeah. And it, it's funny how, so this ego, ego of mine or the ego small self, obviously wants to be heard and wants to be seen. And the way it's seen is through our minds, creating these fears, doubts, and anxiety. And when we get to the other side, the bigger S or the bigger self now says, wait a minute, it wasn't all that bad. But going back eons ago, we had that fight or flight kind yeah. of instilled in us. And that's why that ego, because anytime you get ready to do something big or something new or something uncomfortable, you know, if we go to McDonald's and order a cheeseburger, we've done it a thousand times, you're not going to be scared to do that. Yeah. But if you go to a restaurant where you can't read the menu, you don't, I don't understand what I'm going to order, you be definitely nervous. Yeah. But it's funny how we need to visualize the transcending, or I ask myself this question, is that true for you? So when I face situations that are uncertain and uncomfortable, and I have all these doubts, I said, well, how true is that for you? Yeah. I don't know. Or I ask myself, okay, well, if that is true, then what? I'll say X in my head. Then what? I'll say Y. Then by the time I get to Z, I can't say then what? Because obviously it's useless. Because my, myself, so even though I'm a, I'm a life coach, I've hired uh, two life coaches. And the first one really helped me shift my fear. Uh, I mean, I had fear of raising my purse training rates at that time from like, let's say, $45 to $50, a $5 delta. I had so much fear behind that. I was so petrified, scared until I challenged that fear by taking action. Then it's like, wait a minute. I raised my raised $5. Mm-hmm. Some people kind of were upset and didn't resign the training sessions. But then I got four or five more. So what is the issue then? You know, <laughs> you have to do that mm-hmm. to yourself. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think that's the whole thing about fear is that it can leave you kind of paralyzed and overwhelmed. And the literally the hardest part is taking that first step. But once you take that first step, just like you said, it just gets easier and easier from there. So that's the other thing I try to tell myself too, is like, you have to just start because if I'm really scared, like I just want to hide in my bedroom. And <laughs> Nobody get out, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I know like I have a post-it note and it says just start. And it's like, it's my reminder of like, whenever I start to talk myself out of these things that I want, I have to just start, even if it's messy and uncomfortable and awkward and not how I wanted it to look, I got to just start. That's so true. Just what start. about like, um, what about like, there's this saying, I know a lot, a lot of, I hear this from a lot of people to, you know, why, why change it? Why change if it ain't broke? Yeah. That's a, that one really gets me at my core. <laughs> um, and I don't even know if I can give you a proper explanation on, on that one, but I just, I don't like, I get it. I totally get it. Mm-hmm. I think it's just a really old fashioned way of thinking. And, and it, and my whole thing is I'm always like, yes, it's not broken, but it can be like elevated, you know? (laughs) Right. Yeah. You know, so it's like, like I don't see it as a negative thing. You know, I always see things as an opportunity or I see the possibility in things. And it's like, yes, it's not broken. And there's always room to grow and explore and be an inquiry. And yeah, I'm not a huge fan of that phrase. It's so funny that you bring that up. 
I told people in the past, oh, oh, well, if it's not broke, why fix it? Okay, if it's not broke, how can you make it better? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That's a good one, yeah. I, I brought it up because, you know, what you're, you know, you're mentioning, you know, the changes and then you have the post-it notes to kind of just remind yourself. And I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah. gosh, you know, this just kind of sounds like this with people. I, I, I get a lot of people telling me that. And, and, you know, it's what it is, too, is just trying to get out. I guess I'm one of those people that's kind of out there. And, yeah, I like to explore. But, you know, there's a lot of people that doesn't get me and we're all different. We're all in our own unique way. And I'm sure you know that. Um, but it it's interesting how some people can stay there, but that's them because they're not ready to get out of their comfort zone. And, and going in with you and being in front of the camera with you, I was able to get out of my comfort zone and even just posting my pictures on social media. I mean, you know, I don't look like one but you made me feel like a model that day oh my gosh (laughs) i think you do look like one girlfriend no i just you know i just that moment that day when we were at the beach i'm telling you we're walking and even the first time it was um the first day i think the first time i met you yeah our first photo shoot and i just just like oh my god you know i was feeling it (laughs) Yeah, that makes me so happy. Well, I mean, I really feel like every person should experience that feeling. And I, I think now more than ever, we're living in a time where our stories need to be heard or deserve to be heard. And I think it's like, I mean, I could really get into this topic, but that's what it's all about, right? It's all about like the photo shoots for me is like, I want you to be seen and heard for who you are exactly and where you're at in life. Like it's okay if you're not exactly where you want to be in life, like you still need to be seen and felt heard and special and yeah, I think that's just like my ultimate goal. Like I want you to have fun and and feel beautiful because that's truly how I see, like that's how I see everyone. So yeah, it's it's really cool to hear you talk like that. And it was <laughs> it was magical, especially the ocean shoot for sure. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I just mm-hmm. I love your your ideas and how you can just feel it from what that person is like, you know? And I mm-hmm. I had that so much trust in you that I just left it with you, you know, when you said, okay, what location, where, what do you feel like? But what I heard from you was just, you know, you felt a certain vibe with me, just speaking with me and when, when, when we met and you said, this is the kind of vibe I feel for you. So we went ahead and did it. And you know what? You were on point because oh I couldn't explain it to you. I know it's somewhere deep down. Uh, I don't, I just, I couldn't get it out, but you got it out. So oh when we my got God. there, I was like, gosh, Emily, you're right. This is it. <laughs> that's Good. like it, that's like music to my ears, honestly. And it's so funny because in my head I was like, I really hope she doesn't ask me like how I do that because I, I don't think I can tell you. Like it's just a feeling I have in my body and I feel so woo-woo saying that out loud, but I'm crazy intuitive and – I just, I just get a feeling and I run with it. That's I being controlling your own emotions, being control of your own thoughts. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. That's the higher self, not small self. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so true. What is one thing you can tell our audience as a takeaway from your story? Oh, gosh. Um, I think what I'd want to say is. Oh, gosh, so many things. Um, (laughs) I think what I'd like to say is really try to, especially, I think it's because the times we're living in, and and I feel kind of cheesy saying it, but I think my takeaway would be to whatever it takes, get yourself to a place where you're living in love and you're leading from a place of love and you're making decisions from a place of love and like do whatever it takes, whether it's yoga or getting out in nature or moving your body or making a big decision that feels scary, like trust the love and the abundance and let go of the fear that's holding you back. And 
Yeah, I think that would be my takeaway. Like, yeah, yeah. Anything that feels scary, <laughs> just, just start, just take action and really do it from a place of love. I love that. I love it. I, it's just like in I life coaching. Felt that. All mm-hmm. the energy. Yeah. All the energy went out and I felt it through the mic. I Yay! did too. I did too. I love it. Um, yeah, it's it's called, it, you know, a lot of it too is self-love. I think that's, you know, if it's coming from that too. Um, so thank you for that, Emily. I love it. Yeah, thank you. And, and for those out there that um, need your help and, and, and well, how, how can people find you is more yes. or less what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so I'm I'm going through a really exciting time in life and my business. Um, I'm rebranding. I'm redoing my website. So I think the best way for people to find me right now is Instagram, um, and it is my first and last name, E M I L I E B E R S photo. Um, and then from there, you can join my 2021 waitlist, or you can shoot me an email or DM. Um, I absolutely love connecting with new people. So that is where you'll find me. Look at you. Wait list already for 2021. I, I can't <laughs> even. Are you How doing anywhere exciting. special for the, the rest of 2020 or, or what's happening here? Yeah. She's well, got, you know, she's booked. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. So I, I made a goal to um, shoot through the rest of November and then I'm not going to be shooting in December. I'll be working on the back end of my business and, my fiance and I are celebrating three years, so we're hopefully we're we're trying to do some sort of getaway at the end of the year, um, something that involves nature, maybe a little bit of snow, um, and yeah, and then it, I feel like it's safe to say I'll see everyone in twenty twenty one, and that's so just within a few months, within yeah. a couple of months, right? Exactly. Emily, it's been a pleasure having you here, hearing your story. Um, that's why we call it life to shuffle because you really try and solve a lot of different things at once, not just career, not just relationships, but yourself. Yeah. Because if you can shuffle yourself into a better deck, things around you become more vibrational, higher, more abundant, more happiness, and more just an overall love that you just said and flow. So thank you for being a guest on life to shuffle podcast. This is Ron Johnson, your mentor coach. Thank you so much, guys, and have a great rest of your weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. 